Hey, what's up guys? Um, so I'm coming at you today with a little bit different video. Some of you know that I just got back from Kenya. I was there for two weeks, which is on the opposite side of the country, uh, continent, <laughs> where the Ebola crisis is happening. Um, but anyway, you know, I saw a lot of things, experienced a lot of amazing things while I was there. Um, I also spent some time in an orphanage. Uh, it was an amazing experience. These kids, regardless of what they had, they seemed they were like they were so filled with joy. And that was probably one of the most touching and uh, impactful parts of the trip for me. And out of all the needs that I saw that could be uh, met, there was one thing that stood out to me. Um, and it comes in the form of a 16-year-old boy <laughs> who is unlike any 16-year-old boy I've ever met. This kid was just so ambitious and uh, driven and full of hope. He, you know, and he is an orphan. He grew up without parents, and he's lived at this orphanage for quite some time. Um, but he's like one of the, he seems to be one of the smartest kids I've met. Uh, and he's just so, he has such big dreams and big goals that he wants to accomplish. He wants to become, a, his, one of his dreams is to become a journalist uh, and live in the United States. And he has such a good heart, a heart for God. I mean, it's, uh, it's really amazing to be around this kid. And I felt that I wanted to introduce Mazuko, is his name, to you. And I wanted just to put him out there. And I don't know, maybe someone will see this video that wants to help Mazuko make his dreams come true. And I don't know really how that, what that would look like. It's where he can have the tools necessary to be a service to society uh, because I honestly think that he can and unfortunately I don't think I think he's not going to be as great a service as where he's living in the, the, the bush I look at this kid like he could be a president someday I mean it's amazing kind of uh, coincidental since I think Obama uh, <laughs> is from Kenya actually um, or his parents are from Kenya or something like that <laughs> Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments about that. So yeah, I hope this video of Mazuko touches you and maybe you feel called to help him out in some way. Maybe it's adopting him. Uh, maybe it's supporting him financially. Maybe it's just writing him a letter of encouragement and telling him how awesome he is. Anyway, you can send those all to robrods at gmail.com and I'll be happy to relay those to him or um, help, help uh, you figure out a way to do this. And this video by no means does some justice. I just... I just told him, hey man, get behind the camera for a second. I don't want to get, I don't want to leave here without getting some footage of you. Um, so, yeah, he just spoke on camera for like 10 or 15 minutes. This is someone who's hardly ever seen a camera in his life. Without further ado, here's Mazuko. Yeah, and I'll, I'll leave. Yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, no pressure. No yeah. worries. See? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. Before listening to my story, first shout, I'm a winner, three times. That is, I am a winner, I am a winner, I am a winner. To begin with, I'm Diophilus Masioko Mutua, a grade 2 student, 16 years old. I have lived in Bitini Emmanuel Children home for 10 years. And this gives me a very important experience. This important experience has enabled me to publish three books of my own, of which one is an inspiration material. I wrote my first book early this year, that is 2014, immediately after realizing where my talent lies. In this book, I have expressed my sorrow and disbelief upon losing my parents. My father departed first and really tragedy had touched our family. And remember, tragedy might be an habitual druggard who keeps coming for more. A month later, 
my fa- my mother passed away too. The death of the of both of my parents left a wound which slowly healed, leaving a scab. The scab even even fell off with time, leaving a scar. For there must be something in memory, a little disharmony and a breakage in the continuity of the weave of life. Soon after the death of my parents, I was taken to Bidini Emmanuel Children's Home where I grew up. To survive in this home, I had a very simple therapy. That is, there is no a greater physiologist than the one who graduates from the hard school of life. I have even kept in mind the wise men saying that you can't know where you are heading to unless you know where you are coming from. For how can you know your destination without knowing your whereabouts? Up to this day, I really appreciate God and glorify Him for the greater things He has done in my life. He has protected me for those 10 years I've been in the orphanage and I wish He would protect me for the two remaining years of my journey to my destiny. I really trace my origin to God, the Lord of the eye of the rising sun. For he is the sole creator of heavens and earth and the only beginner of the life and the plan of man. For is it not he who brings down the rain during dry seasons to water our crops and brings forth new life? Is it not him who told Jeremiah to call upon thy name for he would answer him and show him greater things? Then why should we deny him all the glory and honor which he fully and purely deserve. I have come to realize that many students have astrophic thinking that students from poor backgrounds cannot make it up to university. But here I am today to testify of God's greatness in my life. Believe as I believe that we can make it to university no matter where we come from. Because I know that our dreams are valid. A student like me, I would like to encourage you to put more efforts in studies, knowing that it is only God who can help us. I have studied with many students from poor backgrounds, others from even richer backgrounds. And this has taught me a lesson in my life that the race is not for the sweet. Education is not for the rich, neither is it for the poor. But time and chances happen to them all. So, I do call upon you, a dear orphan like me, to put more effort in your studies. Believe in God and you will achieve your dream. Let God be your guide. Let God be your protector in whatever you are doing. Remember, the power is in your mind. And unless you accept it and you exploit it, 
it becomes of no use. Just know that you are a born leader with all what it calls for to be a successful student in the future. Believe in God, believe in yourself, and through this you will achieve your dreams. I believe that God is on my side and some years not far I'll be somewhere in America with my job as a journalist. To wind up, I just beg you, my friend, to pray for me and pray for all my colleagues in between Emmanuel Children's Home. There are so many children in the orphanage, all from poor backgrounds, but one thing I want to tell you is that we were born and brought up in where we are just as per God's plan. Remember, God began the plan of man. He controls and protects us. But one thing I know is that everyone was born with a divine appointment. Then why should you, my friend, live in disappointment? You were born to be an answer to your generation. Then why accept to die without having given this generation the purpose and the answer you were born to give? Serve God wholeheartedly. Realize your potential and ability and be in a position to exploit your potential. Don't worry about the future. Even though you might not be knowing what the future holds, you just know that God holds the future. Remember to serve God's plan in this generation. For the Bible says, after David had served God's purpose, he rested. So my dear friend, you were born to rest. Why should you die? If you fail to serve God's plan or God's purpose in this generation, you will not rest, but you will die. Remember, it is a very crime, a very bad crime to die with medicine in your mind while others are dying of sickness. It is even a serious crime to die with water while others are dying of thirst. So, serve God's plan in this generation. Don't die unless you've given this generation what God created you to give. Remember, we are living on this world for only a short period of time. I won't forget to encourage everyone to serve God through his talent. Remember, we were given very different talents and abilities. We don't have the same potential, but even though we might have different levels of education, everyone was born with God's purpose. So, don't live a life of disappointment. May God 
the Almighty be with you in your endeavors. Thank you. That's it.